Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Okay, so this angle, I know it sucks so bad. You guys are like, what is going on? I know my ring light's not on because I know it's ridiculous. My camera is literally sitting on top of a box of aquarium salt. So if you guys could just like. Okay, so today's video, as you guys can probably see by the title, something i don't actually know what i'm titling this because i'm filming this really 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 early compared to when you guys will see this so exciting news um i finally got bagel a friend i found him a friend and his friend is going to be arriving tomorrow i'm really excited um i'm kind of anxious only because my fish luck is terrible however i'm very hopeful so a few days ago i was looking for bagel a friend online at different goldfish websites and stuff because after going to my local fish store in my last video you guys saw i didn't see any male goldfish there that really spoke to me or that i could be 100 percent confident were male and so i didn't get any none of them really like struck me as a good friend for bagel so I didn't get any fish obviously in that video. However, I did start searching online. A lot of you guys were sending me messages and comments and things, which I totally appreciate suggesting different websites. And of course I've done a lot of research into goldfish sellers and things. I'm also on goldfish Facebook groups. So I see where they're getting their fish from and everything. So I've been aware of a lot of goldfish retailers and breeders and things like that online. I just prefer to get one in person if I can avoid shipping, you know, cause I did get butter from a breeder. I just try to avoid shipping if at all possible. Um, however, I am shipping Bagel's friend because I was having a really hard time finding one in person. And I kind of wanted to just move this along, you know, because I didn't want this to be drug out really long because I am truly ready to get him a friend. And I know that he's ready. So you guys can see, I have my tank set up in the background. Bagel is not in there yet. He's still in his 20 gallon. I want to wait and keep him in his 20 gallon and then kind of do it all swiftly after his new friend is here and then his new friend is ready to go into the 20 because I don't want to lose the filter medias that are in Bagel's 20 gallon. So I want to put off moving all of that over um, just for a few more days. So that is what brings us to this video. I am going to be setting up my quarantine totes today. So you guys can probably see I've got my totes set up here. These are two 17 gallon empty totes. If you guys followed my butter story, also if you followed my quarantine story with bagel, you guys know exactly what these totes are for. These are my quarantine totes that I basically use for all of my fish so far. I've had two goldfish obviously go through this process and it's proven really successful. So I want to explain a little bit for anyone who's new here why I do this. Basically, I like to go on and preemptively quarantine my fish as I think everyone should instead of putting them straight into my tank. I also like to treat any new fish that I get with a antibacterial and also an antiparasitic. Now whether I do them at the same time or I do one and then the other, it really depends on the fish, how healthy I think the fish is. If the fish has something really bad like butter had dropsy, I may hit it really hard really fast as like a last resort which actually did work out for her so it really just depends but I do love Metroplex by C him so I actually picked up a bottle the other day this right here now this is an antibacterial basically will kill any bacteria that may be looming inside of the goldfish's system and it just serves as a really good antibacterial I actually really like Metroplex you can actually dose Metroplex directly into the water or you can soak it on pellets and then let the pellets dry so whenever I get my new fish I am going to be putting my new fish into the totes into the quarantine totes basically what I do really quick I'll explain for anyone who's new here and hasn't seen my process Basically, I fill both of these totes up 24 hours before the new fish will arrive, so tonight. And then basically, I let these age. They're also primed. And then tomorrow, right before I put the new fish in, I will medicate it. Now, now obviously, when I get the fish and I assess the fish's health and everything, um, I may medicate it right away. I may wait a day to medicate it and let it kind of just calm down, you know, because obviously, shipping can be stressful. If you're going to use something like Metroplex, which is an antibiotic, I do recommend you do it outside of your tank. That's why I have the tote system set up, because... Basically, this will kill your filter. It is antibacterial, so any healthy bacteria that is in your filter, this will kill it dead. And I have got two tanks. I need to be cycled and running, and I have two filters going. Oh, there is also Canaplex. These are two things that I used when Butter had Dropsy. I also use them on Bagel for his quarantine. So Metroplex is really great for anaerobic bacteria and parasites, and this one is a really good bacterial and fungal. So these used together, I've actually had really good results because they kind of just like 
take care of all of the bases. However, he did still show symptoms after a week of both of these. He still had symptoms of something else and I wasn't exactly sure what it was because like I said, a lot of times things aren't visible, but you can see the fish doing different types of behaviors and that will kind of signal to you there may be something going on. And I wasn't sure why he was having these spasms and he was flashing on the bottom of the tank. That's basically where a fish is basically rolling or swimming on its side on the bottom of the tank, basically scraping its side on the sand or the gravel, whatever you have in the bottom. Just as a safety precaution, assumed he had flukes, which these things may have missed. Um, sometimes it can be harder to kill, whatever, I don't know. Uh, but basically, I went in and treated him with Prazipro. This is an anti-parasitic and it is a really, really good one. And it also is pretty gentle on fish. You can even use this on puffers, so I've heard. Puffers are a very sensitive type of fish. They don't have scales, they are very smooth. So you kind of have to be careful when you're medicating puffers and things like that. Um, and I've heard that Prazi Pro can be used on puffers. I don't have one, please don't quote me, but I'm just saying, I've done research on it. And Prazi Pro is a really, really good anti-parasitic. So I treated Bagel for three rounds with this Prazi Pro and he had no more issues, no twitching, no spasms, no more flashing. So I definitely think he had something going on externally and this took care of it. The problem is with bacteria and parasites, a lot of times you can't see them. And and odds are, at least in my luck, because I have really bad luck with getting sick fish or fish that have something wrong, the odds of your fish having something going on are very high. Whether it's bacteria, parasite, it could be flukes, it could be ick, it could be anything. And you won't know until it starts showing signs and symptoms. And whenever a fish is stressed out through things like quarantine, being shipped, which a lot of fish are, and things like that, it can make them shed different things that are in their systems. Just the stress alone can have them shed different things, especially from bacteria. So I use both of these in conjunction. I'm not sponsored or anything. I just swear by Sea Kim's products. I love these medications. They saved Butter's life and I got to spend almost a year with her after her dropsy and so I really do swear by them. So you can see here, I've got my two totes. I'm gonna go on and fill both of these up. We're gonna let them be uh, primed and sitting and aging for 24 hours and then I have my aerator which I will turn on tomorrow so it will be aerated now I'm not gonna be putting a heater in these obviously number one it's a goldfish number two I doubt this goldfish is gonna have dropsy or anything that would need a really high heat however whenever you are medicating please remember that medications can take oxygen out of the water so so the aerator is not optional. They need an aerator, especially since there is no water movement. It's gonna be just sitting, aged water. You're gonna need aeration, especially if you're medicating, and especially, oh my lord, if you're heating these, like for a tropical fish, you have to make sure you put an aerator in here because there will be no oxygen in this water. So, that's it. Let's get started on filling this tote up, and then I'm gonna turn the aerator on tomorrow, and we will medicate it tomorrow, obviously, after the fish comes, so that's exciting. All right, the first one is done, so we're just gonna go on and dump in some prime, and that'll sit for 24 hours, and this will be aged. And now we're filling up this one. So the fish is gonna go in this one tomorrow, and then basically after tomorrow for 24 hours, we'll move the fish from this one to this one, and we'll be medicating as we swap, just like I've done in the past. Um, I'm probably gonna actually just do uh, the Metroplex soaked pellet so that I know it's getting inside of the fish. That might be what I start with. I don't know that I'll dose with both that and Canaplex right out of the gate. I might just start with Metro. It'll just depend on how I feel tomorrow. Um, obviously, I wanna give the fish time to adjust, and you obviously don't wanna over medicate or anything like that. So right now, I'm doing a water change, a really big one. Um, I did about a 50% water change on the big tank. It's been sitting for several weeks now, just empty, but with the filter running. And I've been doing water changes on it about once a week, even though the filter is not cycled or anything. I've just left it sitting, and I'm doing a big water change right now with fresh water so that we can put bagel in here after it sits for a little bit. Um, and then I'm gonna pop on his cycled filter on the back. So there'll be two filters running, a cycled one and then his big one. And I'm gonna put a little bit of the media from the cycled filter, just like a one, one or two of the sponges. It's got like four sponges in it. I'm gonna put one into the big filter so we can start building and that is it. Hey guys, so it has been a week since I filmed the first clips of this video that you guys are watching right now. This video was just showing you me prepping for Bagel's new friend. Um, it's been a week since those first clips that you guys just saw. I was gonna do a separate video on moving Bagel himself to the new big tank, but I decided to just wrap it into this video. So Bagel is now officially moved. He is now in the 36 gallon tank and he is doing so well. 
Like I said, I was gonna do a video just showing you guys me moving him, but I didn't think that was necessary, so I thought I would just kind of tie it into this one where I show you guys my prepping process for the new goldfish, and then as well as moving him over. So Bagel has been in the new tank for almost a week now, and he's doing so good. He's adjusted really well. I think he really loves the 36 gallon, and I'm so happy that he's happy and that it's getting a lot of use. His 20 gallon is now gonna be the quarantine tank for his new friend, and everything is going really, really well. I did end up moving one of his filters. Um, his Aqua Clear 30 is now on the 36 gallon tank. However, I do still have my old filter. The big um, Aqua Clear 110 is also on there. However, it was never cycled because it's obviously a new sponge and everything. You guys saw me set that up. If you didn't see the video where I recently sat up my 36 gallon, I'll have it linked on the corner of the screen. You can go back and watch that. So what I did was I took a little bit of his cycle media and I just stuck it down in behind the new sponge in there in hopes that it'll grow. I did add some sea chem stability in there, which is like healthy bacteria. So I dumped a little bit of that in there as well, but he does have a fully cycled filter that I didn't touch. I literally just took it off of the old tank and put it on the 36. So. I am testing the water daily to make sure the ammonia doesn't spike or anything like that. You know, obviously it's always possible you could lose your cycle, but so far so good. That filter's done really well for me. I love hang on back, so so far it's going really well. I hope you guys enjoyed this video of me showing you guys how I set up my quarantine process for a new fish as well as showing you guys bagel in the new 36 gallon. I'm really excited about it. I didn't get any close of actually moving him into the 36 because I was actually really nervous about doing it. So I kind of just did it and I didn't want to worry about my camera or setting up or anything because I didn't want to make any mistakes, especially with moving the filter and some of the filter media around and stuff. So I did it off of camera, but since it went so well and obviously it's been quite a few days since I did that, I wanted to share it with you guys. But I really hope you guys enjoyed this video. Stay tuned because there are more fish videos to come as well as other videos. If you don't want to miss any of those, feel free to subscribe down below and also hit the notification bell so you don't miss any. I really appreciate you guys watching. I'll see you guys in my next video. Be kind. Bye.